I come from a family that is descended from Irish immigrants, but I actually hadn't really asked a lot of questions about that until I began studying um, Irish studies and Irish history at Notre Dame. Yeah, my own roots come from County Mayo in the west of Ireland, uh, and I'm a, a New Yorker. My uh, Irish immigrants came uh, to the United States through Ellis Island and, and just stayed right there in New York. I do have family ties to Ireland. I don't know much about it, but I do know that back in the early 1800s, on my dad's side, emigrated from Ireland into the United States. I had a great grandmother um, who was told the morning of that she was getting on the boat at uh, 17 years old, didn't know a soul over here. She went on the long and difficult passage over and um, here I am because of that. So many others, of course, scattered to the great cities across the United States and to Chicago in particular. Everywhere, of course, the Irish went, they, they really helped build the United States and make the country what it is today. So when they would come over, they would see the Statue of Liberty, this great representation of freedom and independence and this a symbol of hope, I think, for the new life that they were hoping to lead. And now the Statue of Liberty is something I see any time that I'm well, traveling around the cities. Uh, growing up, our Irish heritage and culture was always something that was really important to us. I learned all Irish dances, and but I actually hadn't realized how much of like a physical presence in buildings like this and memorials throughout the city there was. These places give the New York, its history and its voice. It's more than just like modern buildings and glass. It has this culture and history that like really I think is where a lot of people can draw on what makes New York great. Um, so I think they're really important to who we are as New Yorkers today and then all the New Yorkers who came before us. We're here in Old St. Patrick Parish, uh, the mother church of the Irish Catholics in Chicago. The parish is the oldest uh, church here in Chicago uh, because all of the previously built uh, churches were destroyed in the Great Chicago Fire. Uh, it is the first church in the United States to have uh, an entirely Celtic motif in its design. Uh, the stained glass windows, the uh, murals on the walls were all executed between 1912 and 1922 by Thomas O'Shaughnessy and they were uh, meant to be uh, reminiscent of the Book of Kells in terms of their uh, Celtic design. We're here in St. Gabriel's Parish in the Canaryville section of Chicago. The parish was founded in 1880, uh, and this church we're in right now was built in 1888. Father Morris Dorney uh, was known as the King of the Yards, uh, the stockyards here in this area. He had the great respect of both uh, the workers and of management. He obtained a law degree uh, while he was pastor of this parish and used that law degree to offer free legal advice to his parishioners and to assist them. Kind of highlights the role that these parishes played not just as centers of worship uh, and of, of ethnic community, but, but all, also of charitable endeavors. We're here at the Church of Our Lady, Help of Christians in Swinford to document this church and many churches around Ireland to help build an archival record of many of the characters of these churches. So there are 3,000 churches across the island of Ireland, um, most of them built in the 19th century and afterwards. And if you know anything about 19th century Ireland, you know that it was a very poor place. It was a century of famine and mass emigration and not much industry and, and, and so on. Uh, and yet, through you know, the voluntary contributions of ordinary people, rich and poor, at home and abroad, they managed to build 3,000 churches, many of them magnificent, large, imposing, like the one you see behind me. On the architecture side, many of these churches were built using local tradesmen, local materials, and local ideologies on what it means to be a Catholic or any Christian religion in this area. When you're here in Old St. Patrick's, uh, you see a church that has been beautifully maintained, uh, in fact, restored in the 1990s. Uh, and so there's hope, of course, that this church would remain as is for many, many years to come. Uh, but unfortunately, so many churches built by Irish immigrants, uh, beautiful as they are, because of uh, demographic change, because of suburbanization, because of uh, people moving out of the city and decline of numbers and uh, participation in the church, 
So many wonderful, beautiful Irish churches in the United States are threatened with closure, uh, with being turned over to secular purposes, with being torn down, or even if they remain open, the demographics of the population in a particular area have changed. And so the Catholics who now populate that parish might be Hispanic, Latino, Asian, and the design schemes, the uh, donor plates, the liturgies that are celebrated in those spaces are all gonna change. And so there is, over time, the chance of losing so much of this history and this heritage. So the parish project is designed to uh, record uh, for history uh, the Irish uh, parishes and churches built in Ireland and in the United States by Irish immigrants to the United States, for example. The history of the parishioners who donated money to build these beautiful churches even amidst their own uh, poverty as immigrants. The dedications, the windows, the art, the statues are phenomenal sources for historians to uh, do social history of the Irish in the United States. I think well, people walk by buildings and places like this all the time and nobody really asks about the people who built them and the stories they had. So I think by having uh, courses at Notre Dame that do focus on Irish history, which is fairly unique, um, it allows people to kind of begin looking at those stories and remembering those people and their lives that came before us. The history of these places is really the history of faithful men and women who saw uh, the sacrifices that they had to make to build community and to build a house of worship and to sustain their faith, to pass their faith on to the next generation, and yet therefore they were willing to make those sacrifices. I think that's the heart of the story of immigration in the United States. It's the heart of the story of Irish America. Uh, and the, we shouldn't undersell the importance of the physical place. While we know that uh, the church is living stones, is human beings, and is the faith that's in our hearts, uh, that faith then has manifestation in concrete and in glass and in steel uh, and places matter. It's imperative that people do whatever we can to save um, these buildings because they're a lot more than just like bricks and mortar. They are the representation of people's lives and a past that we need to preserve however possible. So I think that if we were to lose a lot of these buildings and memorials, New York would lose a lot of its character and soul. We have so few records from the earliest days of uh, the Irish in Chicago. The name plates that we have, the donor plates, the names inscribed in windows and on statues, along with sacramental registers, might be the only records we have. If those records are to disappear, then we're cut off from a source base of this earliest era of the Irish in Chicago. The solution is a pretty simple one, actually, uh, and that's what this project, in partnership with Notre Dame, is seeking to do. So what we're going to do is capture all of these inscriptions in all of these churches around Ireland photographically. Uh, we're going to input them into a database, digitise that database, and then make it freely available as a searchable resource on the internet. Freely available around the world to anyone who is interested in a particular church or wants to know more about their family history in Ireland and thinks that their ancestor might well have donated towards one of these churches. A lot of the value I find in the parish project is my ability to trace my own lineage back from anywhere in the world. It's great to come to Ireland, but no matter where I am in the world, there will be a digital database that I can access and see and hopefully find all kinds of connections that I didn't even know existed in my family. The chance now is to save all of this, to record all of this, to digitize all of this, so that we have it for posterity uh, in those places where it might otherwise be lost. You know, as uh, at Notre Dame, we speak so often about the Notre Dame family, and we know well what that means in terms of taking care of one another and taking care of our history and tradition. We like to say that anything that happens twice at Notre Dame is, is a tradition, and we preserve that legacy and that history. Uh, we need to make sure that as uh, a university with uh, resources, intellectual and financial and spiritual, uh, that we fulfill our role as a leader in the church in the United States by taking care of smaller institutions that are part of the church in the United States that are less financially secure, less stable, have less resources. Uh, their history uh, stands to be lost. If we who have the ability to step in and assist, don't. So I think if we, as Notre Dame, think about our role in the, in the church in the United States the way we do, we think about family and community and history and tradition the way we do, 
then we have this obligation to uh, look for those places where that history, that tradition is threatened, uh, it might be lost. We have to do everything that we can to help uh, preserve it. I think at Notre Dame a lot they ask, we are the fighting Irish and what will you fight for? And I think that representations of our, the Irish American experience and history and buildings like these are things that we should be fighting for to preserve and save. Thank you.